Right, I've had these bearings in the freezer overnight. I've had the, the casing in the oven for about 10 minutes at 180 degrees. And you have to act sort of quick with this. And remember the casing's hot. Right, so in with this first one. It's a needle roller. This should just pop in. If it didn't, I think it's just here. A gentle persuasion. See that was more than gentle persuasion. Now you kind of knock that in too far because there's a a ridge. You know when you've knocked it in because a change in tone. Put the crankshaft in. Yeah, you have to make sure these have gone straight or they're not going to just fall. Like that. Like that's all the ones in. What I could do, I'll leave in the description the, the list of bearings and I could put a, a link. I've started up a eBay shop as well. A link to that and there's other wee bits and pieces. Right, that's that. That's all they man. Still a fair bit of heat off of that. Right, the other three bearings. For the other side of the casing. Just 
just to show you how easy these are going. I like to have the nut box facing it. And so it's just need a gentle tap. You've got that little one there. That bearing there is the awkward one to come out. Really awkward. I can't do this one handed, honestly. This other one in. Obviously that's a crank bearing, that's on the crankshaft. Right, I'll let that cool down and then we can start reassembling. I usually, I should have maybe showed that this has had a good clean up right round. And I usually do that is get a large sheet emery paper and I put this I call that surface plates. It's basically a, an old granite chopping board. And you just put it on and you slide it back and forward so you're going to make sure everything's nice and even. Obviously after that you have to make sure you get a good clean out and blow out. You don't want any grit left in it. And just check, make sure the casing, there's no high spots in the casing. This, some of this casing is a wee bit chewed up. That's what happens when folk try to stick a screwdriver in to separate the casing. Right there. Right, that's a list of all the bearings you need to do a, a complete rebuild on our AM6 engine. Right, the next thing you do is get yourself some gear oil. I actually use a 1030 semi-synthetic four-stroke oil. I'll use that in the gearbox. So you can see there being a problem with this. So you get a, a wee spot of oil and these bearings, just a spot in that needle roller. Now you've got that shim, put that shim in, another spot. Now there's a wee bit of technique in getting these gears in. Now you've got, put a couple of selector forks on on the gears and you want to enter that one onto that shaft this can be a wee bit fiddly like and just make sure that shim underneath doesn't move so get that entered on gently just make sure that shim's alright it's still in place That's that on. Right, what you want to do is get the there's selector spring, another little drop of oil. Right, selector spring. There's a ball. Now the selector drum. Now there's no shim goes on there. The shim just goes on the other end. 
Right, so you have to sort of juggle this in. That tab there goes into that centre groove. I'm sure it goes in the centre groove. If you actually turn that a bit, so you're getting the, that's the way it faces, so you're getting it tenor there. That's easiest. Easiest way. That's that in. Pull that other gear up to select that into the bottom groove of the drum. Get the other selector fork, put that in there, put that in the top slot, enter that through, easier said than done. No, that's not right, take that back out, it's just dropped. So that's in there. That's in there. Just a bit of lubrication that hole at the bottom there. Get a little shake about and that should plop in. Another thing is if you put too much oil in that hole at the bottom you're going to cause a sort of hydraulic lock. You try to get that in. Yeah, that's all right in. Now the only other shims that goes on these, the gear trains is that shim there. That's eventually gone through the other case and that's where your sprocket goes on to. So. Your selector shaft. Yeah, that's I had a second hand one of these shafts out, it's quite easy to swap across. Just off that circlip, pulled that off. Have I got the old one? The old one's totally mutilated. Wait a minute. There's the old one. straightforward. Right, there's a shim that goes on that bit of the shaft there, onto the gearbox. So let's see, could be that one, nope, that one, that's the one there. Just a bit of lube. That, that's like a two-way spring, so that, you have to get that between that. Right, I'm still waiting on bolts for the, new bolts for the casing, so this is about as much as I can do with this now. Take that back out. Not about. There 
you go. Just make sure the shim's there. And there's a shim goes on top of that. Is that the one there? Nope. I've got a feeling there's a shim missing in there. I've no idea where that was off. That's how it just felt a bit. So. Should be a shim for that. I'll have one lying about somewhere. 